Hey, what's going on guys? Yesterday I brought home my 2017 Yamaha R6. You're probably wondering why I bought it. So let's go talk about it. All right guys, so here's uh, another installment of my uh, little series of why I got XX motorcycle. Since I got my 2009 R1, I've made a video for every bike that I've gotten. Uh, I made one for my R1, I made one for my WR250X, I made one for my CRF450, and I made one for my Honda Ruckus. And now we are here with the 2017 Yamaha R6, bought it brand new. Uh, I was in the first 500 to order these, so I got that fancy new quick shifter that they've got, uh, which isn't anything special, but <laughs> it's just the uh, quick shifter that comes straight from Yamaha, which uh, I know my last video, or uh, yesterday's video, you can check that in the description, uh, I mentioned I didn't know if you could uh, do MotoGP shift, um, which I have on my R1. I love that, uh, and I'd like to <laughs> I'd like to switch this one to GP shift, uh, but I wasn't sure if their quick shifter would work with GP shift, and uh, sure enough, it does not. God, this spring, the motor on this, God, the transmission. It's just so freaking nice. And we're gonna get into it today talking about all the questions that you guys have. I will probably do some sort of Q&A um, live stream on Instagram. So follow me on Instagram, at Motonocity. Uh, that's linked in the description. But sometime later this week, I will definitely do a live stream so you guys can ask me any questions about the R6 or why I got it if it's somehow not answered in this video. But, and I know this video will probably end up being a little bit longer, so let's jump into it right away. But first, I want you guys to check out my uh, impressions video of the R6 when it was first announced. And I explained everything about the differences between the new R6 and the old R6, all of my criticisms about the bike. So that will kind of give you an idea of where my head was at before. Now all those criticisms that I had about the new R6 are still, uh, they still apply. I still have those criticisms, uh, but my conclusions are different, obviously, because now I have one of the new R6s. That is a chair in the middle of the road Look at that good Samaritan moving that chair. Someone lost some lawn furniture. So that video has a lot of my criticisms. Also, there's another video, why I got my R1. I'll link that as well, because that goes into a lot of why I got a leader bike um, and a little bit of my thoughts on leader bikes versus 600s. God, this, I, I tell you, like the lightness of this motorcycle is just incredible. It feels so good. So so smooth. Now that I've wasted a couple of minutes, uh, let's get into why I got the new R6. So quick, 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 quick background. I had a 2009 R6. I had it for four months. It was my second motorcycle that I had and it was stolen. After that bike was stolen, I got my 2009 R1 and the rest is history. But I loved the R6. I've always loved the R6. I think Yamaha has the best 600 class motorcycle, not including the Daytona 675. I've never ridden one, but uh, I did want one back when I got my R1, but it was just a little bit out of my budget. I'm also just a little bit biased. I love the R6 and I love what Yamaha does with them. And anybody that's watched my videos over time knows this, but I have always wanted to get another R6, not to replace my R1, but as a second super sport. And I know that's a little bit weird. That's one of the questions that people had, you know, why would you get a 600 when you already have a 1000? And to answer that question, um, I think the only way that you can really understand why is if you've ridden both. See, the leader bike class and the 600 class are just not the same. And I know my video supporting leader bikes, one of the biggest criticisms from people who don't like leader bikes 
is that it's just way too much for the street and there's no reason that you would need more than a 600. And so in that video, I talked about how the fact that, well, it's not just power, there's so much more about leader bikes that make them great bikes on the road. Uh, they have, they're not as high revving, so when you're on the highway, you're not sitting at seven, 8,000 revs. They're heavier, so they have a little bit more of a comfort factor, uh, a little bit more of a solid feel in just standard highway cruising. You're not getting blown around by other cars and 18 wheelers and things like that. It's kind of like uh, an M5 versus an M3. You know, why would you need more power than an M3 has? But the M5 just kind of feels more like a solid luxury sport vehicle, whereas the M3 has all that sportability, but it's just a little bit lighter and easier to throw around. That's kind of how these are. Uh, it's not a perfect comparison by any means, but uh, we'll go with it. <laughs> but the 600 is so much lighter. So yeah, there is a lot of advantage about having a heavier Super Sport, um, and I love having the R1. But for things like twisties, uh, the R1 is uh, a little bit of a, a beast to deal with. It's heavy, it really is. And there are leader bikes that are lighter. The new R1 is so much lighter. Obviously the Panigales are pretty light for a leader bike. And one of the most popular roads here in Austin is Lime Creek Road. And to be honest, I just don't enjoy riding it on my R1 because of how heavy it is. They're super tight turns and it, it's just like a lot of work to throw it around. And when you want to go out and cruise and have a little fun, you don't want it to necessarily be a workout. And sometimes you do, you want to develop your abilities. And when I go to the track, obviously like I am exhausted after those. But when I go out and ride a lot of times, I, I just want it to be easy and enjoyable. And it's not necessarily always like that on a leader bike. And I wanted to have something that was easier to do those kinds of roads with, easier to ride twisties with. Like freaking this, like this bike just dips into this so easily. I don't even have to try. It's just so light. So I always knew that I wanted to have another R6. I wanted to kind of get back on that bike that I fell in love with, my first Super Sport, and kind of use it in cases where I didn't want to go through the ordeal of dealing with a heavier bike. So another one of the things that I talked about in my impressions video for the new R6 was that they didn't really change a whole lot. The majority of it is just a cosmetic change. They redesigned the look of the bike while maintaining the same platform. And they did change some stuff. Uh, they used some lighter materials, I think in the subframe and in the tank. But as a whole, they're using the same frame, they're using the same engine, uh, the wheelbase is the same. There's so much that's just identical to the old R1. Um, another one of the criticisms is that they didn't use the new dash from the new R1. They used the one that they released on the R1 that I have that released back in 2009. So I was just kind of disappointed that they didn't do more with it. But what I started to think about in the months after I made that video was why Yamaha would do that. What I came to kind of accept was that Yamaha already had a great bike in their R6. One of the most popular 600s that people buy. A great platform, it didn't have any problems, it performed well. So one of the things a lot of people would leave in the comments is, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think I was really craving and hoping that they would do more with that bike, but they didn't need to. They had a great platform and they took that platform and made it a little bit better. You know, they improved the suspension by using R1 forks and a new uh, rear shock. They have a bigger brake rotor in the front, a new updated dash, albeit not as updated as I would like it to be. <laughs> so no, they didn't improve power output. They didn't drastically redesign the frame or the structure of the bike. They didn't put a new motor in, but they didn't need to. They already had a great platform and they simply made it better. They lowered the center of gravity by uh, decreasing the weight of the tank. They increased the feel of the bike by upgrading the suspension. They added ABS and traction control, increased the stopping power, and gave the bike an incredibly nice refreshed look. It really is a great bike that brings the R6 into the modern day. And once I came to realize that, I knew I wanted to get the R6. Like I said, I always wanted to get another R6. When I came to think of it, like, I loved the R6 before. And if they took that R6 and gave it a lot of improvements in areas that it actually needed it, 
you know, why, 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 how could I be unhappy with that? So we're making progress, covering a lot of stuff for why I got this bike. Let's, uh, let's go on to another point. I haven't gotten a new sport bike in four years. I bought my R1 in June of 2013. It is now uh, late April of 2017. Now, I love my R1 so much, but I haven't gotten to experience another sport bike. But a lot of people were expecting me to get the new R1. And I know a lot of people who watch me regularly will know why I didn't get a new R1. And that's because I've always said, I'm not gonna get the new R1 until they do the mid-cycle refresh. I wasn't in a position to get the new R1 when it first came out as much as I would have liked. I was one of those people that loved the redesign on the new R1. I still love how mine looks, but I really like how the new one looks too. I, I would like to upgrade my leader bike. I would end up selling my R1 most likely. It's got a crap ton of it. Like it, it's not, they're no slouch. You know, to, to the people that say, you know, you don't need more power than a 600 on the streets. No, you, you don't, <laughs> but it's all the other stuff on a leader bike that I think are valuable street features, if you will. So yeah, people who watch my videos regularly know that I wanna get the R1 when they do the mid-cycle refresh. I think we've kind of addressed why I wanted to get another R6, why I wanted to get the new R6, and how my conclusions changed from my criticisms, but it probably doesn't really answer the question of why I bought the 2017 R6 as soon as it came out uh, instead of, you know, waiting to buy an R6 or picking one up used, saving some money. But here's why I bought the 2017 R6 brand new. The previous generation R6, the first release of that redesign was in 2007 and they ran that through 2016, a 10 year span. I was not riding. I was 17 when that generation R6 came out. So obviously like I had no opportunity to buy that. I wasn't even riding at the time. Even if I was, I wouldn't have been in a position to buy a brand new Super Sport. <laughs> you know, now I have that ability. I have the ability to, you know, buy a new bike and I am a strong proponent on not buying new motorcycles. For the vast majority of people, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense sense because the depreciation on motorcycles just happens so fast. But here's why I bought mine new. One, I wanted to buy a new R6. I wanted to get the new model. Uh, and how often am I going to get the opportunity to be on the launch year of a new design for a bike? Specifically the R6. Like, am I, I would have to wait another presumably 10 years to get the launch edition of a redesign. I would be, I'm 27 now, I would have to wait until I was 37 years old to, to get another R6 in its launch year. I would not be the young whippersnapper I am now <laughs> at 37. So for me, that was uh, one of the big factors. I, I wanted to be able to get this model in a launch year and kind of experience that development of mods and aftermarket parts and just experiencing something new uh, before a whole lot of people were able to obtain that design. You know, I had a great opportunity. I could financially make it happen. Another big reason, and this has a lot more to do with the fact that I have a YouTube channel that is heavily based around motorcycles. It's gonna be really cool to be one of the first people making videos for this bike. Whether it be tutorials or installation videos for aftermarket parts. But no, like I'm really excited to be able to bring those videos to people who are searching for them because, you know, for the next 10 years, if, you know, YouTube doesn't crash and burn. I'm excited to make those videos for people. You know, those last two points, being able to own a motorcycle in its launch year, which doesn't come very often, and being able to be one of the first people making videos for a new bike. Those are probably the biggest reasons for why I got an R6, why I got the new 2017 R6, and I hope that answers those questions that you guys had. For my first 24 hours with this bike, I can tell you I am very, very happy with my decision. I, I love it, you know, I loved my old R6, and this one is just that much better, and uh, just from my memories, I feel back at home, but they've also done a lot with this new bike. I'm really
really excited to bring these videos to you guys. If there's any more questions that you guys have, I'll leave them in the comments. Again, I'm going to be doing a live stream on Instagram sometime this week. I'd like to do a lot more live streams on Instagram, so make sure you follow me. I post some pretty good pictures, I think. <laughs> I hope that helped anyone that was watching the video. I know this is probably incredibly long. Thanks for sticking around if you made it this far in the video. Uh, hit that like button, guys. It really